Hey everyone, I'm Jim T. Graham with RC Groups. I'm here to bring you RC News. It is March 3rd, 2022, and uh, as usual, I've spent the last seven days scouring the internet, the phone lines, and everywhere else that I could find some RC News to bring to you today. Uh, before I get started, though, I want to uh, send out a personal note. Uh, everyone at RC Groups wants to send their condolences out to Jim Burke. Jim, as you may or may not know, is the founder of RC Groups. This was his idea way back in 1996. He lost someone uh, close to him today, and we just want to let him know that we're all thinking about him. And uh, you're in our thoughts, man. All right. Let's jump over to rcgroups.com and take a look at what is going on in the RC hobby. There's something uh, very cool that I saw pop up this morning that Jason added. It is a drone nut. And I was just looking at this before the broadcast. So let's read about what it is. Drone nut is the world's first bi-rotor ducted fan drone that is designed to be safe around people and sensitive equipment which of course would be important on a movie set or at a wedding or any of the other crazy places people sometimes put a drone up in the air. The Made in the USA drone nut is the world's first bi-rotor ducted fan drone that is designed to be safe around people and equipment. It's highly maneuverable and equipped with various sensors and cameras to safely navigate itself through whatever environment you can throw at it while live streaming an HD feed. That's interesting too. Let's see. There is a video. I have the audio turned on. Let's go take a look. This is your standard drone music. That is so unique looking. I would like to see the internals. is a tightly fitting shirt oh it's pretty small I like it now the big question is how much does it cost and can you buy it okay this reminds me of the early ETOC's except he's doing this in something that uh, can bump into something okay okay this is all stuff we used to do uh, in hotels but this is much more safe see what else we have here. Collision tolerant. Okay. That's always good to hear. You're bumping it into these filters. I don't know. Okay. I am imagining the possibilities. We'll hit pause. Now let's see if there's a buy link. And we're headed to the site. Order. I'm going to hit that. Let's talk. Hold on. Product. The big question here is, uh, can I buy this thing? I saw the video. I see your promotion. I need to know how much it cost. I do not see anything. I'm going to hit order one more time, even, even though we both know it's not going to work. Let's talk. Submit. Okay. Well, it's very cool, but it doesn't look like it's something I can order right now jumping back to rc groups p.s and by the way if you're an advertiser in the rc hobby i'm putting together an rc trade show and i'm looking for companies to be partners in this with me because without uh, rc companies you don't have much of a trade show it will live in this top section and uh, i've done this a couple of times with great success i've literally sold companies out of every piece of product they had so if you're watching this and you're a company and you're like, hey, I want to be in that trade show, please contact me at RC Groups. Um, I'll think of a great way to, to contact me and I'll put it in the description below in this YouTube video. All right, jumping back into the news, let's see what else we have. This is kind of, uh, this is uh, about a week old. I don't know if I spoke about this. This is the E-Flight T28 and what I did and what I do in the Horizon Hobby media highlight is I go in and I hunt down videos on products. And if you're lucky, a brand new product will have more than one video. And if you're really hot to buy something, if I am at least, 
I know that I want to see people showing me uh, the plane I want to buy in multiple ways so I can just learn about it. And so here we have multiple videos that are going over this bird. And uh, you can go check that out once again at the very top of the side of RC Groups in the Horizon section, Horizon Hobby, a uh, great asset to the hobby in general, always coming out with cool stuff. Uh, they're just full of people like you and I. This is cool. This is Arm Soar. When they first came out, Jason and I both commented on how we thought it was interesting. Their name was Arm Soar since they're a sailplane company because you got to, you got to, chunk those uh, cell planes in the air and it'll make your arms sore. So this is an article from the arm sore site about uh, the pull string installation and what makes a good tail linkage. And uh, we'll take a brief look at this video. Real hey quickly. guys, welcome back to another RC Glider Basics video. My name is Thomas Lee and today we're taking a look at the tail linkages on DLGs. If you've been flying DLGs for the past several years, then you're already likely familiar with the pull string setup. If you're new to DLGs, then this might be something new for you, even if you've been flying other types of RC planes in the past. In today's video, I'll explain what is a pole string tail linkage on a DLG, what are the traits we're looking for in a good linkage setup for tails, what the three main types of linkages for tails are, and at the end of the video, I'll answer some of the common questions I've seen regarding the pole string setup. Okay, we'll stop there. You can find this on RC Groups in the let me show you something real quick you can go here to all rc but if you're a sailplane guy this should show up in the sailplane site ah everything's working it's amazing yes so you can go there and read the full article and then go jump over to arm sore and learn what thomas is talking about i've been in contact with thomas for many years um good guy he always returns emails which in this day and age is great so go check out arm sore if you're a sailplane fanatic now in a little bit higher speed version not version but uh, higher speed area we have the durafly excalibur and the response that we're getting in the thread is a lot of people feel like they're being separated from their money because they have to go buy this thing stewart's back with a video going over the updated durafly excalibur v2 high performance 63.5 inch v-tail electric hotliner slope soar and uh you know i was Was talking about Stuart in my last and a lot of cool uh, airplanes. So this is forged by the kings in a distant realm. The legendary Excalibur has proven to be a force to be reckoned with. It's now available in an updated version that includes a brand new eye-catching high-vis color scheme, improved propeller assembly, metal geared servos, a must, and even more carbon and glass fiber reinforcement. And with that said, let's go let Stuart tell us more about it. <laughs> that sounds Love good. Love that sound. Sometimes in real life, I hear this in my head, this song. Welcome to HobbyKing.com. My name is Stuart and I'm here to present to you a quick flight review of the Excalibur V2. Now, uh, a lot of you will know and love the Excalibur. Uh, it was a very, very popular model in its uh, original iteration and it was definitely worthwhile bringing it back with a few small improvements. That being said, it was so good in the first place, it didn't really need much improving. But I will tell you the points uh, of uh, improvement that we've done on the V2. Now, in terms of spec, it's pretty much identical. The model of size, of course, is exactly the same. The power plant is the same, but to what you have got that is different, the servos are now all metal geared throughout. Uh, the motor and ESC are the same, and it still runs on a uh, 4S18-2200. But the propeller is now a uh, carbon-infused nylon propeller, and it has a fully CNC'd aluminium spinner. Aluminium. Now, those two points are important because these props are actually stronger and more efficient and lighter. And the aluminium spinner is durable, of course, being from metal, but aluminium, it's lightweight. And being uh, metal, it allows a little more heat dissipation from the motor. Not that the Excalibur motor 
gets very hot anyway, but if it does, then the uh, aluminium spinner helps to remove some of that word. from the motor. And then the two final other changes on the Excalibur, well, of course, there's the scheme. It had a very nice striking scheme before, and it has again now in the V2 iteration. And we've added some additional carbon fiber in the fuselage and in the wing uh, joining area, just to give it some additional strength and a little bit in the tail as well. Other than that, it's pretty much as it was before. If you are new to the Excalibur, um, definitely check out the flight review we're about to show you, but also underneath this video, we'll give you a link to the V1 flight review. Could be fast, it's got lots of pull, but yes, yes, yes. Of the I want to see him throw it now. Place, Here we go. Public, uh, Oops, sorry. A public place that we're uh, allowed to fly at. Um, so it's not at the club, um, but it is a park. And uh, if you have permission, the Excalibur is a good type of model to fly in parks and you don't have a club. So we're going to launch it now. And then when I come into land, I'm going to have to... I'm wondering if he's really going to let go of it like this. Wind at last minute. So let's give the flight review of the Excalibur V2. Ready? Ready. Now, this is how I launch. Just hold it like this, pretty much full power. Yeah. And then just let go. Man, that's cool. Now that is half power climb out. How's that on camera? Very nice. You know, right. I'm going to go check the price of this. Around. This is pretty awesome. And I'm going to all power off. Now, remember, it's got that folding propeller. All just basically sloping. There's a bit of wind coming off the water there. Now I'm going to go full power and go up full power climb. You can see it really, really disappears. I'm sure you're struggling on camera there. A yeah, you bit, would. Yeah. Power you want to make sure your glasses were all in spec for if you're going to fly this guy. <laughs> that sounds good. Love that sound. Now this is very much uh, like the V1 in terms of uh, flight performance and sound and everything else. Remember, all we've really done is add a little bit more, there's that sound, is add a, a little <laughs> bit more reinforcement and the servos now are uh, full metal geared. Bring it all still us. power off, it still has great uh, energy uh, maintenance, it, by which I mean it maintains its uh, forward momentum very, very well. It's a very aerodynamically sound airframe. Now you can just fly, fly full uh, power all the time if you wish, or and you'll probably get around three or four minutes flight time. But it's really about climbing up and then going uh, power off and just getting the maximum amount of flight times. Okay. Just by gliding in like this. Now I'm going to take it up again. You ready? Ready. Full power climb up. Come around and I'll do a fast pass. Power off, listen to the whoosh. Beautiful sound. And it turns. All right, so let's uh, very, very make tight. sure we watch out for that landing and see if we can stick it. Like I said, there's a breeze there coming off the shore. That's really, really helping. Coming around. Okay. Here we come. We keep maintaining power off. Coming around. I'm gonna bring it around Some this chickadees. way. What are those called? Got some oyster catchers there making the noise. That's the oyster catcher there. Okay. It's all still power off. All right. I'm gonna bring it around. I guess he went around. The wind is coming in from the right hand side of frame. So I'm actually gonna put a little bit of power on now. Just to give me some uh, uh, control over the air surfaces. And then the propeller's on now, acting as an air brake. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna kick yes. it around with rudder. Try not to turn too much. A bit more power. Just uh, ran out of air at the end there. But come over. Yeah. It's um, a very tough airframe. I caught it a little bit there, but you'll see that it's absolutely fine. I think I'll probably do another landing just to get a nice one in the bag. I think, I think nice Stuart has a little swag. I did a nice one. <laughs> Always typically when the camera's not rolling, you do a nice one. Of course, yeah. So there we go. A little bit of uh, dirt there, a little bit of grass. All right, everyone. That was Stuart from Hobby King and uh, the Excalibur. And I think anyone who flies RC might feel the urge to go get this thing. I love the hand launch. Very cool. So once again, you can go to our uh, our main magazine channel and go check this out. And then all the appropriate links are here. So I believe this is at the top. Yeah, you can go check out the bird. Let's go check out the price. I'm going to guess two. No, I'm not going to guess. That's a terrible game to play. Uh, I was pretty close. Okay, 229 That is phenomenal price, I got to say. That is a low entry barrier. All right, everyone. The Durafly Excalibur. Uh, we just uh, started talking about it on RC Groups. Let's jump back to our magazine page. 
Uh, I am talking to SD Models. They wrote me last night. They have a new wing. I'll briefly touch on this. Uh, I, I Is that a kind of a wing? Well, let's take a look at the video. Okay, it's like a DLG wing. What? I didn't get it. I didn't understand that's what this was. Of course, I don't see anything now, but great throw. Wow. A DLG wing. Hold on. Okay, now I get what he's doing now. He's flying it around. Let's. Uh, let, this isn't a new model, but I've never seen one uh, before the Florida Icebreaker DLG contest. It was designed by SD Models, 1.2 meter, two different versions. Uh, it has extreme back sweep and large vertical surfaces. Excuse me. Needed to stabilize the yaw uh, during discus launch. Wow. How much does this cost? Discus launch gliders are not cheap, my friends. And I've had a couple. I've had one uh, that was homemade, and then I had another. Well, I guess that was homemade, too. Let's go find the number on the price. Hello, hello, hello. Maybe it's not available to order. Switchblade, home. Okay, here's what I'm going to do for you. A, you can go research this on our site. There's a lot of videos. I would have, anyway. Um, and B, I, like I say, I'm talking to the person that's making this. And so when we get more info, I will report back and give that to you. Very interesting. Okay, so this is a company that I have worked with. And the interesting part is that he owns a sky park in Sky Forest, California. It's not just for flight. It's for camping, and I think it's like an amusement park. And this is an RC gliding event, June 25th through the 26th. And I have a link. We just updated the sign-up page, but check this place out. It's beautiful. This is where you'll be camping and flying. Very pretty. So this, I don't know, I've never, I don't think I've gone to an outdoor event in California before. But uh, just so pretty. And you should check them out. So let's go, this is the, the actual venue. This is Sky Park, Santa's Village. They are also a multiplex distributor, and I guess all kinds of things happen. There's a bike park, sky blog. Let me check one more thing out here. Yeah, so here's the site. Uh, this is where his RC stuff lives. This is Mr. MPX, and you can go look at all the things that they have to offer. And I just felt like uh, it was an interesting little event that you, it's, you know, I don't see things like this very often. But then I'm not, I don't go to self-plan events. That's more Jason's deal. Um, what else? We have some more DLG information here on the site. Not really news. Oh, wait. I'm in the self plane section. <sighs> Let's go back to the main section. I was like, you know, I haven't seen a lot of these articles. It's because they're not uh, the newest articles. All right, so this is interesting. I may have spoken about this next week, although I'm pretty sure, you know what, I did speak about this last week. It's an A1 Sky Raider build. You can go check it out, watch the video. There's multiple videos on this. This is Legend Hobby, and uh, I have a link right here where you can go find these awesome warbirds. Okay, so it looks like I've caught up to myself. Let me go back up a little bit. We have Jason Cole's What the Heck Wednesday uh, every Wednesday, Wednesday, Jason finds a uh, airplane crash and highlights it here in the uh, magazine, also in the forum. I felt like there's a couple of more things to talk about. We have this coming up. It's Motorama 2022. Uh, it kicks off the travel season event. Motorama features more than 1 million square feet of exhibition space where you can watch arena cross, go-kart, quarter midget racing. So this is more of a ground-based event. We'll take a look at some of the footage. <laughs> they are absolutely launching it. So it's like an indoor arena with full-scale and RC. Holy smokes. 
Motorama 2022. It is the nation's largest indoor racing event. When I say largest, it's over a million square feet. The cool part is Horizon Hobby is one of the top main sponsors here. We're going to get to have a lot of fun, and we're going to take you along with us. So something else that's awesome about Motorama is if you like RC, it's here. If you like four-wheeler motorcycle racing, it's here. There's all kinds of stuff, but also shows. So you have rock crawlers, you have oh, jeeps, cool. you have race cars, you have things that go fast, you have things that go slow. Things that are shiny, things that are not. There's rust, there's shine, there's like chrome. That. It's so incredible. If you want to see it, they have it. Okay, so big Horizon event. Be sure and check it out. Let's jump back, see if there's anything else that we need to discuss. Um, if you have a club like the San Antonio RC Club, be sure and reach out because we would love to feature it. We're all about uh, telling people about clubs across the country. You, you know, there might be a club down the road you don't even know about it. And we'll sit, put a link in right to your club page. So always interested in that. You can contact myself or Jason Cole. And I feel like, I don't know. Um, I checked this yesterday. The President's Day sale is still going on at Hobby King. So check that out. And then did I talk about the newest airplane from, I'm starting to get crossed up. Um, I sent out a mass email and some of the stuff in my mass email was in last week's show and some of it was not. And so I'm not sure. I'm, I know that we talked about this, the new uh, Turnigy Power Series motors. So there you go. This is kind of a highlight of some of the most recent things that are on the radar. And once again, you can find them at rcgroups.com. And they are all in our forum sections. But they're also, if you wanted to find them directly, in the All RC tab here at the top, or button, I guess that would be. It's not really a tab. And always keep an eye out for the Horizon Hobby Spotlight to see what's going on there. But there's always a lot of stuff going on in RC groups. I'm going to go down to the forum spy and watch a few threads pop in. So these are people posting as I speak right now. And that is rcgroups.com. Hey everyone, I'm Jim T. Graham. This is your RC News Update 3-3-2022. Um, be sure to hang out with us on RC Groups and sign up to the mass email, which is sort of uh, like what I'm doing here in a text format. And I'll provide a link to that in the uh, description below, as well as links to many of the stories that I went over. I appreciate your time and I always appreciate people watching us live. I will be in the live chat and uh, answering questions, providing links if I can. And once again, Jim Burke, we're thinking about you, man. All right, everyone. I'm Jim T with rcgroups.com.